Today in our 2010 Lincoln MKX, we will be installing the Draw Tight Max Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver, Class 3, part number 75992. As you see, this is what our new hitch looks like on our MKX. Very nice design, as most of the hitch is hidden behind the bumper fascia. The only thing that sticks out is the actual receiver tube itself, which allows you to gain access to your 5 8 pinhole for your hitch pin. And there's another pinhole here for the J-style locking pin. Easy access to your tow loops, so for towing, you can go ahead and hook up your safety chains. It does have a nice black powder coat finish that's going to protect it from rust and corrosion over time. This hitch is rated at a 4,000 pound towing capacity and a 400 pound tongue weight capacity. You also want to double check your manufacturer specifications to see what your vehicle is capable of. Now that we went over the hitch, let's go ahead and give you some measurements to help choosing some accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the nearest point of the bumper is seven and a half inches. And from the top of the receiver tube to the ground is 16 inches. That'll help you choose accessories for your hitch, such as a ball mount, bicycle rack, or cargo carrier. Now we'll go ahead and show you how the hitch is installed. Now the first step to installing our new hitch is lowering the exhaust. We're gonna go ahead and take a safety strap here, put it under the exhaust just to hold up the weight of it while we lower it. So you just hook your strap up right here underneath it. It'll hold the weight once we undo our fasteners. We have one right here in the back and then one on each side on each muffler. We'll go ahead and spray the rubber isolators with some spray lubricant just to help ease them off the hangers. So we'll go ahead and take a pry bar or a large screwdriver and pry those off the hangers. We'll go ahead, use the safety strap, just to lower it down a little bit. We need to go ahead and lower these two heat shields so we can go ahead and trim them up so we get our hitch into position. Now we'll go ahead and remove these two eight millimeter bolts here on the outside of our heat shield. And then go here to the middle, there's a push fastener and another eight millimeter bolt. Now when we reinstall our heat shields, we will reinstall this one bolt here in the middle, so you want to go ahead and hang on to that. Then we'll go ahead and get a large flat blade screwdriver and pry the push fastener out. Once you get that out of the way, you can go ahead and remove the heat shield. And on this one, there's one push fastener that holds some wiring, so you want to go ahead and pry that one out also. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process of removing the heat shield here on the passenger side. Now you can see on our heat shield, there's this tab that goes into the frame. We need to go ahead and trim that off. You can go ahead and use a cutoff wheel or a rotary tool. We're just gonna go ahead and use some tin snips to trim our heat shield. So once we get our tab trimmed off, we need to go ahead and trim this corner back also. Now once you have that trimmed off, that allows you to be able to access the mounting location up here at the frame. We'll go ahead and repeat that for the heat shield on the passenger side. Now that we have our heat shields trimmed, we can go ahead and reinstall them. We'll be using the push fastener here, and then the bolt on the inside. We'll, we'll not be reinstalling the two bolts that hold it to the frame, as our hitch will hold our heat shield up when it's in position. Now the bolt right here is a 5.5 millimeter, so we'll go ahead and just remove that and it will not be reinstalled. You can see you remove that, that loosens down, and we're actually gonna go ahead and tuck that up behind the fascia. And as you can see here, that allows us to access one of our attachment points. Here on the driver's side, the oval hole will be our 
forward most attachment point. The round hole will be the next one up. And then once we get those two in position, we'll go ahead and drill out a 17 30 seconds hole here in the frame to make room for our third attachment point. Our attachment points will be identical on the passenger side. Now we'll go ahead and show you the hardware for our hitch. At each one of the locations, there'll be a spacer block that goes into the frame with a carriage bolt going through it. That'll set through the frame in each one of our mounting locations and then get secured with a conical tooth washer, which you wanna make sure the teeth of the washer always face the hitch and then a hex nut. So that'll be the same hardware at each of the three mounting locations on each side. The oval hole here, the round hole, and eventually the hole that we drill up here. Now to gain access and get our hardware into the frame, there are pull wires provided with the kit. And here at the very end of the frame, you can't really see it, but there's an access hole in it. So go ahead and take our pull wire, feed it here through our forward most lining location and out of the rear of the frame. You can see here, getting access to it. Feed on your block. And then your carriage bolt. So you grab the other end, feed them into the frame one at a time. and out of our mounting location. We'll go ahead and keep our pull wires on. That'll just help us putting our hitch up against the frame and not pushing our hardware back into the frame. We'll go ahead and repeat that here for the second mounting location. Now that we have those two carriage bolts here on the driver's side, We'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the passenger side. Once we get those in a position, we can go get an extra set of hands to help us lift our hitch up and attach it at these two points. And then we can go ahead and use the hitch as a template to drill our last hole. Take the pull wires and put them in our two forward locations, raise the hitch up. Undo our pull wires and use our conical tooth washer and nut to secure our hitch. We can go to the passenger side and install our hardware there. Now, before we drill out our hole here for our rearmost mounting location, we're actually gonna go ahead and tighten and torque these bolts just to hold our hitch into place. Now we need to go ahead and drill out our hole here for our rear mounting location so we can put our hardware into place. Our final hole size will be a 1732nd. We'll be using the step bit process of starting out with a smaller drill bit and working our way up to the final drill bit size. To start out though, I do like to take the final drill bit size, put it in our location to mark the center and start from there. So now that marks our center, so we know our hole will be straight in the hole. Now that we have our final size, drilled out, we can go ahead and take our last fish wire and put our bolt and block into position. So now once we have that carriage bolt through the frame and through our hitch, we can go ahead and take our pull wire off and attach it with our conical tooth washer and hex nut. Then you can go ahead and repeat the same process on the passenger side. Now we can go ahead and tighten down our final hardware at the very rear of our vehicle and then torque it to specifications as indicated in the instructions. Now with our hitch tightened and torqued down, we can go ahead and reinstall our exhaust. Take our safety strap, help hold our exhaust up for reinstallation. 
It's always a good idea to go ahead, spray some more spray lubricant on your exhaust hangers. That'll just help get them into place. Watch our exhaust is back into position. We can go ahead and take down our safety strap. Now with our exhaust reinstalled, we're ready to hit the road. And that'll do it for the draw tight max frame trailer hitch receiver, class three, part number 75992 on our 2010 Lincoln MKX.